Hi, in this video I will show you how to put together the 3D milk can, which is an SVG file from Simply Crafty SVGs. So before we start, um, I just want to show you the pieces. So if you um, have these pieces, these kind of curved pieces, this is all for the lid, other than the, um, the handles. So there's one big candle and that's for the lid. So I'm going to put that up there. And then this goes on the inside of the lid, so that's the lid pieces. So I'm going to leave that there because I'm going to start with that first. Then we have the sides of the milk can right here. So we'll fold them all and get them ready um, before we do that. And that's the bottom of the milk can. So this is the milk can. Now here's the straps that go on that side. So let me show you what I mean. So here's the lid. So this is a test piece, and so what I did is I took a rainbow color piece of paper, and they're all lined up to go on a 12 by 12 um, printed paper. So it's I think it's like 10.6 inches wide with the gaps in between them. But I wanted to do something fun. So if you have a pattern paper that goes from left to right that's 12 by 12, that's a fun way to do it. Um, in fact, if you do that, make sure you keep this piece and that piece together because they're separate. So here they are. And the reason they're in stacks, so what I did with this one, so you can, can see them down here. Let me move these to the left here. So I put them in order. So these are how they cut on the mat. So I kept them in order and I inked them a little bit. But I'm going to pull them off in order and put them on in order. So just uh, if you want to have a pattern like this where it goes from one side to the other, that's what you want to do. And then they get the little handles. And um, I don't have these pieces. This is kind of a test thing. But um, you can go ahead and use it as a gift box or you could use it as a vase. So I think I am going to use it, this one as a vase. So you may not see it for a little bit, but the fiddliest part on this whole thing, this whole design is the lid. So we're going to start with what I would call the hardest part first, and then we'll move on to the rest of it after that. So I always say get the hardest part out if you can, especially when you're not as tired. So you want to make sure your concentration's on this. I don't need this right away. This is for the inside just to hide the tabs. Um, so I'm going to put that up there. So we have this little piece, these two little pieces. So we're going to go from basically the smallest to the largest. So um, you, it's very important that you match this up. If it's a little bit off, like this one was a little bit off, people most likely won't even notice it. So just to let you know. It was a little bit off when I went around, but um, if you ink the edge a little bit, people will not notice it. So what you'll notice is that I folded a lot of these. So you can just fold them gently. So these two go together and then this will be the next level. So you want to fold it like this. Just kind of pre-fold it. So this particular design you probably wouldn't want to go much smaller than it is um, because of the little pieces here. And then here, when you do this one, you can naturally do a mountain fold like that, but really it is a valley fold. So you can fold these a little bit, even though these just need to be slightly folded. I still will fold them just to give the crease in there. Then if you want to train it, just train it like this because this will be the side on the inside sides. So I find it easier to do the mountain fold first and then the valley fold like that. So that will glue like that. So I'm going to put that aside. We're going to start with the smallest piece first. So get these two skinny pieces. And there's a little tab on the side. Just going to add a little glue and I'm using art glitter glue. So I'm just going to line up this edge to the tab fold. So carefully find that and try not to get um, 
don't overlap it. So it's it's important for this lid piece that you can be as accurate as possible. This is not a beginner project, at least the lid's not. The rest of it I think most people can get through. Um, but this is more of an intermediate. So if you're not familiar with doing this kind of thing, then um, I would try a simpler project first. It's just things like this lid is a little bit, to make it the way I wanted, I, I wanted it to look a certain way, um, I had to kind of make it like this. So go ahead and add glue to the other tab and you can put it somewhat flat. It's not really exactly flat, but it's going to have a bend in it a little bit on one side. And we're going to go line that up and again, don't go over the, don't get too, make sure you're really close to that, that edge is close to that tab fold. probably shouldn't have closed it. So I've tried multiple ways of putting this together to make it easier. Um, so, um, you know, there's, you can try it. If you do several, you can try it different ways. You can keep it open and not glue that last tab. Um, and then start from there and go around. So with this one, um, I found if I close both, they don't, they don't, uh, glue very well so what we're going to do is glue one of these tabs and this is the medium so get the medium one so remember this is the inside one it's smaller so as it gets smaller diameter wise it gets uh, larger inside so we're going to line this up so I'm gluing the tab on the inside just be careful to line it up best you can and this was where it, where it gets usually off is where we put these together down here. So it's possible it may be a little bit off. So you can add glue to a couple of the tabs. If you want to do three tabs, you can. I always make an assumption maybe this is new for somebody, so I go a little slower. So I just kind of put my thumb there to line up that edge to the tab fold. If I'm going too slow for you, you can go ahead and forward. So we're just going to go around like this. And the goal of not closing it up is to make sure that we can get around. So again, I shouldn't have closed that first first one. Let's a little bit too much glue. So I'm going to do three tabs. So really, the glue that you add to your tabs, it all has to do with how quickly your glue um, dries. So we're just going carefully and then just applying pressure, just keep going in order. And this wasn't my idea, somebody had suggested it quite a while and that person can attest to the fact that I've been working. I did a working copy of this probably about, oh, I'd say five months ago prior to this. So it's just got around to fine-tuning a little bit. Of course, no matter how much I fine-tune, there's always an improvement. So a lot of what has to do with this is uh, me trying to do it with five different, I mean, ten different sides. So I can see that I'm off just a little bit because I didn't go close enough when I put those two together. So I'm just telling you what the problem will be. You see how, how that that's off a little bit? Because this is engineered exactly with mathematics, if human-wise you're off a little bit, it's going to be off a little bit. But as you can see, it's not really that noticeable. So I know because I'm looking at it very closely. So I have one more tab. And then we're going to tuck this last tab under. So we can tuck it under. I'll, I'll add glue after I get this on. Let's see, I'm a little bit off. So it wasn't quite close enough. So if the first one gets off a little bit, that middle one will be too. So 
but we do the best we can so then we go ahead and this would be this would be a fun uh, project for like a, a kitchen like a country kitchen baser so I just glued that inside one end right there so now we're going to fold these down so make sure everything's good and dry before you move on so this is going to glue on in the inside like this I'm just going to show you So we're going to line it up inside. So again, you can go tab by tab. So, so I put the tab on the right this time, so maybe I'll go from the left end around. So the same thing. What, what I try to do if I know that I'm going to have something that could go off a little bit is I'm going to start always at the, one of the seams where I put the small ones together. So at least I can make that the side. So I'm always going to start at like a, a seam and a seam for uh, the large one and the medium, I mean the small one and the medium one. So you could do that one first. Actually, let's just do that. We'll just leave that tab there so when we come around, we'll have to glue under. Okay, I'm changing my mind again. We'll do this. So let's go ahead and anchor this one. So pull it upward. It's going to go inward. So we'll have to reach underneath, but again, try to get this placed really well. I'm going to hold this as I reach around and I'm going to add glue to these other tabs. I'll do, if you want to start slow, just do two or one. It's up to you. So at one point it's it's going to have to go inward so we can see that I'm lining it up. I have one more with glue. That's where I'm trying to fold it in. I realize my hand was drifting to the right there. And I do use art glitter glue and I did this with metallic, kind of a metallic cardstock before. And um, I think I didn't like the white core so I, I'm doing it rather than in a metallic. I'm doing it in a gray. But you can certainly do the metallic if you want. So I'm not going to lie, this could be, um, for some people, very frustrating, this process. I'm just going tab by tab. Honestly, this has been a little bit of a frustrating project to me. But really, it's just an act of patience and accuracy. So I'm going to glue those last three. Kind of get it in set, set in place for me. But all this was... Um, I don't know how many revisions I did of this particular one, but I ended up landing on this one because uh, I just kept on revising it. And as sometimes when you keep on playing with the design, it's actually more detrimental than good. Um, you could improve it, or you could. As my frustration level with this one was getting a bit high because I was trying to make it perfect, but I realized that this fold was never going to be that simple for everybody so I just had to 
to go. So I tucked that tab like last time underneath. So you could try to glue it all at once and then place it in and glue underneath because those are all the things I'm, all the tabs that I'm gluing. Um, that's another way to do it. I've done it every single way that you can think of. This is the one I decided to uh, show, but I know there's a lot of people that are very skilled at what, of putting these together. I've been doing it longer than I have because I'll attest that I'm pretty good but I'm no I'm not an expert of everything and this is one of the reasons why I don't do really detailed 3d uh, designs that um, I'm just squirting in the glue there a little bit um, that some others do is because I decided that if I was going to do something I was going to make it I want to make sure that the majority of the people that watch my video can do it without a whole lot of trouble. So there it is. Now what I would normally do, and what I'll do is just ink the edges a little bit, so that cleans it up a little bit. But now we have that done, let's go ahead and add glue to these little tabs right here. And then we'll go ahead and glue on the middle piece there. glue on my mat here. just don't want it to get in the wrong place. So make sure my texture side is up. And I'm going to line it up on one side and go around and I'm just kind of squish it in a little bit. And if you put glue on the bottom you might want to make sure, check your mat. To make sure that you didn't get any glue that can get on any other top part. I forgot to put glue on two of them. That's just my little damp paper towel to keep my fingers and projects free of glue where it doesn't need to be. So there it is. So this just folds down like this. I'm not going to go through the process of gluing it. So you just add glue right here and then glue, you can add glue to these or you can add a little bit here but it's going to just go right there and folds down so you just want to go around and glue that inside just to give it a cleaner look. So that's that piece. And then so we can um, go ahead and getting something here. This is the lid for the handle for the lid. So the biggest piece. So what you're going to want to do is um, we're going to go ahead and fold it back. So there's a little cut line in here to help you fold it back. But also just, just curl it a little bit and fold back just a little bit. Most of that fold's going to come out, but I just kind of some of the old cans have a little bit of curve in it. So at this point, what I would do is decide which part you like the best, the front and back. So I'm going to look at it. I think usually where you start's the best. So we're just going to go and put it opposite here. So I'm going to add a little glue to this side. So it's folded up. A straight piece of dry glue. And you can go right to the edge or right below the edge of the middle of one side like that. And I'm just reaching my finger in behind to get that set. So I make sure it's centered and then it's just a little bit below that edge. And make sure you don't pull on it when you add glue to the second side. 
So again, I'm just going across from where I just placed it, the first piece, and place it in the same place but just across. Like that. So that's the lid. Basically, I'm going to ink it a little bit and then we'll move on to the bottom piece of the milk can. So this is what it uh, ended up looking like. Um, you can see it looks like, well I think it resembles the top of a milk can. But one thing I didn't um, mention is that you could use this without the lid and just put flowers like a base. So if you don't want to use the lid like as a box then just make it without and you could put either a handmade flowers or um, or silk flowers you know or paper flowers whatever it is so that's what that came out with with a little inking on the edge to clean it up a little bit so next we want to do is we can't put both um, the panels on because of the curve so we want to fold these first so the reason we're folding them is is to fold is to get it prepped to put it together but also it's going to help us get this panel on so we're going to put the straight panel on first so you can see they're all folded except for a couple because I was just going to show you let me put them up there so you can fold the tabs down like that and then you can fold it so mountain fold which is like the natural fold and then I would back up and do valley fold on that so because it's going to go like that and up and when you fold it uh, the the fold marks help to put the panel on so but we're not going to put this panel on until last because of the curve so but we still want to keep them in order so I have them in order because I cut them like this on a piece of paper from left to right so I'm going to keep them in order and what we'll end up doing before we put these on are just curling it a little bit with our hands like that just to to bend it a little bit to get it trained to go around that curve. So now I'm just going to go ahead and add these panels in order and I'm going to want to keep them in order so that means I want to once I put the, it on the panel I need to figure out a way to um, organize it. So whether I put it on top of each other. So this just centers. So if you didn't want to use the strips that go over the, they're going to be right here and here. Um, I made it rounded on the edges just in case somebody didn't want to use them. But you just want to center this. So there's not much space around because um, that's why we folded it because I know some people are going to use it like I did which that colorful one that I showed you earlier or you could do an image on a piece of paper and it would just cut around it so I've seen that on some um, milk cans so that's that so I'm just going to put them upside down to keep them in order so I'm just going to flip them upside down so we'll continue to do that. So there's not much of an edge at all, but that's why pre-folding it helps. So I'm just going to do this one and then I'll do the rest of them uh, without you having to watch it. So if you need to stop the video to put on panels, um, that's actually what I'm going to do. So you don't, you know, it's just putting this panel on. And if you do like our projects like this, um, I would appreciate a thumbs up and uh, like on the video and if you haven't subscribed already if you can click on the subscribe button and click that notification bell if you hit that notification bell it'll let you know when we have new projects or tutorials available to watch so let me go ahead and put the rest of these on and then um, we'll be back to put it together so it took a moment to uh, put all these panels on since it is uh, ten sided, and it takes a little while. So it's going to be a bit of uh, rep 
repetitive actions. I said reputation, that's funny. Okay, so we want to make sure it's good and folded again. That's going to be a valley fold and so is that because it's just going to flip up at the top. And then we'll go ahead and put that top panel on after we have it together. So we'll start putting together. So I'll go through, talk you through a couple and then I'll do the rest. You can watch the rest after this. So there's two ways to go here. You can start at the bottom. So I'm going to show you both ways. And I'm going to line up this edge to the tab fold so you just have to look carefully. I know you probably can't see it, but I'm just looking at the tab fold. Some people will find it easier to start with this big flat piece or you can start at the top. So we're going to do both ways. So I'm going to fold those back after I get that tab. Um, secured. So just make sure it's secure before you start doing this part. And I'm going to add glue to all these tabs. So the big key here is making sure everything's folded so it'll, it'll guide you how to place it. So if I come here and I'm starting, right, just go in, in order, start with this little tab. They go pretty quickly so you just slightly bend it and line it up and it can guide it. That's the nice thing about wet glues is that you can kind of guide it to where you need it to go. And then I'm using my thumb to make sure that that edge is lined up and doesn't come out too much. And make sure you line it up best you can because you want to line up that. We want to make sure it's lined up to the tab fold so the lid goes on. So we're going to continue doing that. So I started at the bottom that last time. We're going to start at the top. So whichever way you do it, I'd be consistent. So I'm going in order. I just want to make sure it's... See, I went out of order. I went backwards. Let's see. Make sure this is where the, the paper thing comes in. There we go. So I, I'm fine. So I picked a, a pattern with um, kitchen utensils on it because I thought this would be fun to have like a kitchen theme. Be a nice little gift for a housewarming or just to put something fun in it. I can't put that flat. Oops, I'm going to start at the bottom. So I'll do, I'll do three demos. So here's the one. So whatever you do, do it consistently. Obviously you can tell that I tend to go for the bottom part. And the reason I do, I mean it can mess you up if you don't get that lined up. Because you don't get it lined up right, it's going to line up at the top. But the reason I start at the bottom is because this big long tab attaches. So then I can go ahead and flip these tabs back. And then just add glue to them. I know you're not really seeing it, but it does come in handy with these small tabs to have this fine tip applicator. There's information in the description, whether you're looking on the site or the YouTube video. It's not on the YouTube video, it's usually on the site. So I would place it in your hand, so find out which way works for you better and place it in your hand either way. So if you feel that it's comfortable to do it one way, don't be afraid to flip it over and see if it works better for you the other way. So I was going using, I was flipping it around the other way before, but that actually was quite comfortable. So half of this is not just, it's just your personal technique and how it sits in your hand and how it works for you. So we're going to continue. So I'm going to do this one. So you see how that lines up, that pattern down there? That's the reason why I kept it in order. You can see like that. That one was a little bit off. 
one one was off because I actually printed um, digitally printed these and I couldn't get them all across so one was going to be off by default so that's probably what the first one was so if you do it this way so you want to fold it up and line that up at the top so you're just going to anchor it so whether you anchor it at the top or bottom get it anchored first and then continue with the rest. So this requires me to hold it slightly differently. But always go in order of tabs. So whether you go from top to bottom or bottom to top, that way you can kind of manipulate the paper that the way you need to. And I can tell you personally, and some people are going to be different, but that's why I always give you a choice. Uh, personally, I feel like going from bottom to top is easier. This is certainly easier than my first iteration of the box. The first, even though it seems like a lot of work to put all these sides together, um, I did it a little bit differently to make it easier on the bottom. So this was all just one piece. This this was one these were all separate pieces and the bottoms were one piece. So this is where engineering a paper uh, design is critical because I could have put it together, but I think a lot of people would have had trouble. So this was all just there were two bottom pieces and it's so easy just put them together and then add the tops. But to add the tops it was more difficult than just doing it this way. So that's why we're doing it this way. So every file takes time to fine tune. And I'm sure there's going to be somebody out there that says you could have done it this way. I get it. You do your best during the time. And even after I'm done with the project sometimes I'm like, I could have done it something a different way. It would have been easier for people. So I'm just lining this up. So you can see it, um, I said I did a kitchen theme, so along with this at the same time I put out some canister boxes. So they look like kitchen canisters. I just had fun with it. I think I might do a couple of those because I think it's a great alternative uh, gift box. So I've got one, two, three, four done. So I'm going to put the rest of them on um, so you can watch me. I'm going to do it. It's going to be fast. But we're, I'm going to go from the bottom and then go up. So I haven't finished this part yet. And then um, this, when we get to the part where we're going to close it up, um, I'll be back.
So as it gets to this last one, you can see it just kind of curls around each other. So let it kind of curl around like that because it's pliable enough that we can open it. So to put this last piece on, I'm doing the same as I did before. But I'll just want to know to let you know if you're not used to doing these, you can just kind of let it roll inside. Especially, I mean, this is, I don't do many 10 sided boxes. If I want to do uh, more of a round, and which was the case with some of mine, um, if I want a rounder look but I want it to be a little easier to put together, this is the way I go. Um, and this is why it's 10 sided. You can see that that pattern just kind of comes around. It's kind of fun that it matches. So just be gentle. So what I'm just doing is uh, reaching in underneath. And you can see I have it still it's folded in, inward. It's okay. What becomes a challenge is when we close this up, which is the next step after this. So let's get these tabs um, placed. And one thing I've noticed is that it's easier to um, flip it around to reach in from the top when you get to this part point. It was easier earlier to reach in for me from the bottom, but now at um, the top. So just getting that rhythm. For some reason I didn't have that folded well. There we go. Okay, so this is the challenge right here. So we're going to have to glue this to that, right? So what I'm going to do, I, I would say glue them all at once. I'm just going to glue that bottom tab. When you have such a big tab like that, it's going to help. So we're going to just attach that. So you can see I'm holding it apart with my fingers on my left hand. Get it lined up. So we'll start at the bottom there. I'm just kind of folding it to make sure I'm in the right place. Reach in from the top. So originally I was going to make this much larger. And it, it can be done a little bit larger. It's just because my hands are so uh, kind of short makes it hard. So the reason I did that is so I could flip it over and apply pressure to that big tab. Get that in place. It'll help me glue the rest of those tabs. The only thing with that is uh, that you'll have to reach in. So you can kind of bend it back like that. You see that? If you have a fine tip applicator like this, you can just reach in or you can reach in from the top. Trying to be as careful as possible. So I'm going to flip it over so I can use my left hand to guide. I didn't get enough glue on that one. So I'm just going to gently place it together a little bit different. I'm going to hit that top. And get this middle piece. So this last piece is just a little bit active, just trying to get everything in the right place. So I'm just reaching in, applying pressure to the tabs on the inside. So you can see. Now originally um, I was going to put a strap in here to hide these tabs, but I just made them circular so they don't look so bad. I don't have a, the bottom on yet, but if you see it just sits like that. So let's go ahead and put these uh, top panels. So I'll just put a couple on and then I'll do the rest uh, myself. So I'm going to curl them a little bit. So we kind of have to curl it like that. So it kind of goes like this. 
because it goes with this. So it'll, this lines up to the um, the fold where right here, and then so you can start start at the top. So it fits it. It only has space on the left and right. So there's no space on the bottom. So let me place one so you can see. So we're going to start at the top, center it on the left and right. Or left and right. Now that I have it oriented correctly. Kind of line it up to the top. Apply pressure up there. Then we're just going to guide it down. So this wouldn't be, I, ha I am actually using a printed cardstock. So I have to hold it just a little bit longer rather than paper. So let's do one more. We'll demonstrate one more. So it's going to curl like, like that. So it curls up at the top and bows at the bottom. So if you want to use a tool like this, this is just a chopstick or a dowel you could use to get that shape. And you could always pre-fold them all. Um, but what I just forgot to do is put them in the correct order, so now i got to go find where to start. So I'm off now a little bit because I messed up my uh, thing. So, But I'm going to go ahead and put the rest of them on, so let me find the one that goes here. There it is right there. So let's make sure... So I'll just make sure that they're in order now. And then we'll put the rest of them. So I only have one out of place right now. Okay, so let's put this one on. So again, I, I found it easier to start at the top. Center. I got so focused on putting them on, I forgot I had to put them on a certain way. And I just apply pressure at the top first, and then go down. So I'll go ahead and finish those off, and then we'll be back to finish it. Okay, so I have all these top strips on, so you can see it's coming together. So we're just going to go ahead and add the uh, strips. I've already did the top one, so I added, there's two each. I just fold them like that. And we will, there's straps, well I call them straps, but just going on the top and bottom they're the same size, but there's two each, so I started, I'm just going to go with the same seam. I would just go ahead and add glue to the entire thing. Just make sure it's folded first. So I'm going to have the end there, so I'll just start what I would do is just go towards the bottom edge and just place it like in the middle part. So I'm doing the, the middle one, getting that lined up, and then do the rest, line up the rest around there. That kind of scooched up a little bit. I can see I have a panel that's a little bit too low. And then we'll do the same on the other side. So it gets that metal, almost like the metal strips you see around the uh, if you wanted to do this obviously authentically, you could always make it metallic paper, but it's really metallic paper is just hard to, to work with without getting glue all over it. 
I do it on occasion. So I just get that center one placed and then go left and right. And if it doesn't go all the way to the edge, which is fine, um, it's the same color as the, the can. So the last thing we want to do is to put on the handles. So these two pieces right here. So to illustrate how they fold is right here. So I'm going to show you how to fold them. So I put little cut lines in them. So there's little cut lines at the end. And that I wanted to be able to pull that up so it's going to help you pull it up a little bit. And then, so let me go ahead and get that out of the way. So you see how this is the texture side right here. So what I'm going to do is kind of bend it back a little bit. So you're going to want to, you see I'm just kind of bending it back to form it. Kind of like that. So I didn't want to put cut lines in the whole thing because then it would kind of be seen. And So this is a little bit of sculpting paper. Like that. So I'm kind of squaring it off. So you could round it off if you wanted to. But basically this is what I'm doing right here. So that's what it looks like from the side. So I'm going to do the other one. So again, uh, texture side up, or whatever the top of your paper is. I'm going to fold this piece up right where the little cut line is. Fold this up. And then I'm just eyeballing it. This is like, because uh, you know it's metal, usually it's metal. So if I'm, you can use anything round like this. Um, this is a takeout chop, wooden chopstick. And I just played around with this until I figured out this is the way I wanted it to be. So you can see I have a little work to make it even. So I'm going to make it even. So I'm just kind of rolling it around underneath. Just see, it, see how even they are. I'd say close enough. So the way we want to place it is like this. So I'm going to show you on this one. And it was harder to bend that because of the it's metallic. But it's going to go, um, you're going to choose whatever the side is. And I'll choose the side as where the seams are right here. And we're just going to go ahead and go between two. So we're going to place one side. And there's no exact. So there's the seam. I'm going to go to the left. Place one almost to the edge of the panel, the left side of the panel. And then the other one's going to go to the right side of the panel like that. So it may not have bent it enough, so I'm just kind of giving it a bend. So glue that second. So I'm going to put it in the same place, put it on the other, so you see how it's centered. So I'll go show you, get my fingers out of the way, see where I placed it. So it kind of looks like the handle. Okay, usually these are soldered on real ones. I do have one in my backyard. <laughs> so it's kind of modeled after the kind I have in my backyard. Except has, that one has a tractor tractor seat on it. So I'm just going to eyeball where I put it. Same, put it in the same similar place. If you really need to look, just look from the front. And make adjustments before it dries. So that's what I'm doing. I'm just making adjustments before it 
and making sure my bend is the way I want it. It doesn't have to be perfect. I'm just trying to get the look. You could put a twist in it if you want, but there you go. It's like that. So I forgot to put the bottom on, but we can do that last. So just the last thing to do is to put this bottom piece on. So the easiest way with all these tabs, and I hope I made them big enough, is to just add glue. You can anchor one if you wanted to. So what I mean by that is you could do this. You can do them all at once or just anchor one really quick. Just So I'm just attaching one panel on the inside there, lining it up. Just like that. And then you can go ahead and add glue to all these. So it's going to be hard to reach in so you can have something handy like a, like the, that wooden chopstick that I had if you want to apply pressure from within. Once we get it lined up, but I'm adding glue to all the tabs at once. Not very eloquently by the way, because you don't want them to dry before you get it closed. Try to keep the glue on the tabs and on the sides, like me. I promise this is not as hard as it looks. Okay, so the trick is, we're going to put it down. We're just going to kind of go around. So I'm going to go from the right, and I'm going to apply pressure. I'm just getting it shaped. Rubbing on the tabs there. Pushing it in. So this is important that the glue is nice and wet to be able to do all this. So I'm just kind of shaping it. Some days I do better than other days. Kind of pushing it in. It doesn't have to be perfect. So I was a little bit off. We're going to flip it over, and once I have it in place, I'm just going to take the blunt end of this and apply pressure with the tabs inside. So you want something long enough, whether it be a dowel, I'm just going and applying pressure to each of the tabs on the bottom. And if you wanted to, you could cut an extra piece of this and put one inside. You just kind of fold the tabs back, put it inside, and then um, just I could see that tab was up a little bit. And you can get pointy if you want to get towards the the edges. But anyways, you could put you could do an extra one of these tabs, place it inside. If you've seen other things that I do, um, I just decided not to do that on this one. You just don't want anything really heavy. If so, you want to put uh, another panel inside that you would do that before you put that bottom panel on. So that's it. Here's the finished milk can. There's the top. We'll just angle it here. So you can use this as a base. You can use it as a gift box. Um, anything like that. So if you did like this project, please give me a thumbs up below and um, I thank you so much for watching.